Jesus asked them, whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. As soon as he said unto them, I am he, they went back and fell on the ground. Jesus was bold like a lion. And Jesus is the gold standard of Christianity. And if you claim to be a child of God, you have to be bold like a lion. And you know what they say about lions. Lions don't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. For you to become everything God has intended for you to become, to reach the heights God has planned for you, it demands boldness. It demands boldness to be a child of God. It demands boldness to walk by faith and not by sight, to go where you've never walked before. It demands boldness to reach for what you've never reached for before. It demands boldness to win. It demands boldness to break chains. It demands boldness to fight when you're tired. It demands boldness to be above average. It demands boldness to be more than a conqueror. Boldness, boldness, boldness. I don't think you understand me. The door is open to those bold enough to knock. It says in the word of God, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened society where we have access to many religions, how do we decide which one to follow? Well, I only know one way of deciding which of anything to believe is on the basis of evidence. You see, there's a confusion about faith. Many people have accepted Dawkins' definition of faith as believing where there's no evidence. That's nonsense. Faith is an ordinary word. It's not just a religious word. It's an ordinary word. It means trust. And usually, I suspect that all of you, you don't trust either facts or people without having evidence, or else you're a bit silly. And your bank manager won't trust you with a loan unless you provide evidence of collateral. Isn't that true? We all know what evidence-based faith is. Come on, y'all. Use your mind. Open it. Like, really think about this. Really think of, that's why I said, I can look at spirituality and know how it is forsaking the Lord by knowing the Bible. By knowing Satan tricks. By knowing Satan schemes. By knowing the Lord. It says the fear of the Lord um, comes wisdom. The first thing when it comes to wisdom and understanding is first fearing the Lord. And that literally the, the wisdom, the knowledge, it will come to you. For the Lord is gracious when it comes to wisdom. Anybody that asks for wisdom and understanding, the Lord shall give it. And when you start really asking for wisdom and understanding, how I'm putting two and two together, like the beginning message of the scripture, putting the pieces and the puzzles together, right here you'll be able to do it what's up you all welcome to catching puzzle pieces welcome to gaining new insights new revelations all right so here uh so I've been going back to studying Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield. And so this video popped up on my feed and I, I wasn't going to click on it. But then I was like, okay, I'll click on it. I, I knew it was going to be good. I just wasn't sure if I wanted to make the time for it. Right? Yeah. So, because we all have a lot on our plate. But right here, I just... This is just one little clip, one little insight that I got, a bunch of insights from this video that I could make videos about. Uh, some of these insights I will use for future, for other videos, but right now I'm just focused on this one little clip. On serendipities. Here they talk about them, they talk about different subjects. Uh, but serendipities, I ran into the craziest serendipity yet. Uh... I'm in the process of making the video and editing it so that I can share it with you all. So it's in the works. Uh, but hear this one real quick. I'll probably add this little clip to it because it's in 
you know that because it's it's in alignment right so through my own research and my own journey my own path I discovered serendipities uh, follow your serendipities be when you find one follow it uh, because for me for you it may be something different for you know uh, and only you are going to understand this because this is for you. This is a mission that Father God has given you, right? But I'll let her, I'll, I'm just going to play the clip and we'll go from there. You already know how this works, right, with me. So I just can't in my mind, right? So I have to have, it has to be drawn out of me. Yes, that's how it is. This is what I know about myself. So here it goes. Yes. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's so worth it. And when you start to feel those signs and see those bits of affirmation from another soul who comes in to give you that encouragement or from that weird synchronicity that lets you know you're on the right path, keep going. Life, for me at least, starts to take on a level of, of magic and of mystery that feels so incredibly satisfying, more so than, you know, some of the external accolades that I feel grateful to have. And those are wonderful, but the real magic is in sitting down and doing the work. Yes. So it's, it's super, it's extremely fulfilling whenever like this, I read this, I was like, oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you for this serendipity. Thank you for this serendipity. Thank you for this. The serendipity is a confirmation that I am on purpose with my purpose, right? That I am on my path. By me being on my path does not mean that I'm keeping you out of your path. Run that through your mind. This is why I have no hate for anyone or jealousy for anyone who's doing better than me. I get frustrated with myself because why can't I do what they are doing, right? But what is the, what is the, and then I, I just ran into another sister in Christ. She created, created another video about sowing and reaping. And so where we are desiring what other people have, the seeds they have planted, so they have reaped a big harvest. But we're over here desiring their harvest, right? Or like, why don't we have a harvest like they do? And they're not even uh, in relationship with Father God, right? From the Christian spiritual perspective, right? So, and as she broke it down to me and Father God was rebuking me and correcting me through it, right? And I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for correction. Thank you for correcting me. I understand. So I need to work on my discipline. So I need to be more disciplined. So this is why other individuals who are not, not in Christ, right? Looking at it from a Christian perspective, if you are in Christ, they are doing better than us because they have more discipline. And that's the odd thing about the word of God, that the word of God is like gravity. Gravity doesn't care. If you're old, good, bad, a baby, a murderer, a sociopath, or the greatest person, kindest person in the world. If you go and if, if you fall down off of an 80 story building and you hit the ground, you're going to splatter. So in the, sen in the same sense, the word of God, if we if we put it, if we apply it in, in our life, we're going to yield some results from it. Whether we accept Father God as our Lord and Savior, Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, that doesn't matter. You know, you could still be honest, not lie, not cheat, not any of that, and apply the Word of God to your life. You could do that and still not be in relationship with Father God, be submitted to His will, right? So this is, maybe that's where religion and spirituality is different. I don't know. I'm still trying to ask Father God and give me clarity on that, right? Because I still don't know what religion is, what spirituality is. I don't know. Some people say I'm religious. Some people say I'm spiritual, probably. And I'm like, I don't know. All I'm doing is relationship with Father God, surrendering, and, you know, on purpose with my purpose. 
but I'm going to play the clip again for us. So powerful. You. Yes. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's so worth it. And when you start to feel those signs and see those bits of affirmation from another soul who comes in to give you that encouragement or from that weird synchronicity that lets you know you're on the right path, keep going. Life, for me at least, starts to take on a level of, of magic and of mystery that feels so incredibly satisfying, more so than, you know, some of the external accolades that I feel grateful to have. And those are wonderful, but the real magic is in sitting down and doing the work. And so here, right, from uh, Marie Forleo's perspective, this is how, how she sees it. The way that I see it and understand it is, yes, it's like magic, but magic is like a fantasy kind of thing right and that's why to me it's like no i don't want to use that word that term but i get to connect with individuals who are not in relationship with father god that's a word that probably i should use right it's like like that but for me it's more a divine thing it's divine i don't mean that i am divine i mean that the divine is using me i'm surrendered to father god and he is using me and that's why i'm giving jesus the glory. This is the reason why. So brothers, so sisters, so men out there, so uh, ladies, fellas, women, men, boys, children, if anyone you're checking out my channel, my children, follow the serendipities. Only you will know. No one else will know this. Only you can will know within you. Go check out this video, I'm gonna put it on the uh, the full video. You think that you're getting away with doing certain things, but eventually you will reap what you sow. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. In the same way, it may take time for you to reap the benefits, the benefits of a good thing, right? A good seed. And you know, it's important for us to understand that as believers, understand that sometimes the the things that we sometimes are living in, not even sometimes, but a lot of times, oftentimes, most times, all times really, we're living in not just our prayers and God's grace, but we're also living in our harvest. We're living in our harvest. So if your life does not reflect the kind of harvest that you want, then you need to begin to plant good seeds into the ground. And again, this is something that applies to believers and unbelievers alike. And another thing that oftentimes we as believers do is we can look at the lives of unbelievers, for example, and we might ask ourselves, you know, why is this unbeliever so successful in this area that I might be struggling in? Well, sometimes it's just that that unbeliever has unconsciously put in the principle that God has established in his word and in the earth. So again, an unbeliever might be very successful in business. That's because that unbeliever understands the principle of seed time and harvest time. So they may have sown seeds of diligence, seeds of consistency, seeds of hard work, and that's why they're reaping those benefits in a way that you may not have sown those same seeds, okay? And so sometimes we look at unbelievers and we ask ourselves like, God, why is this unbeliever blessed and I'm not? Well, have you sown good seed into the ground? Have you sown the kind of seed that will ensure that you are successful in this area? And it also goes back to sort of a similar thing that James chapter 2 talks about, which is faith and works and how faith without works is dead. Um, and I just released a video on this, so go check it out. But literally, some of us want to reap where we haven't sown. So for example, let's say that you want to get into a particular college or school, right? Now, this is your dream school that you really, really want to get into, okay? Um, if you don't sow the seed of hard work in high school or of, you know, doing some extracurricular activities that will make you stand out in your application, or if even sending out the application, then how do you expect to reap the harvest of getting into that good school, right? Now, of course, because God is a God that we cannot put in a box, God may do a miracle for you. It's very possible. God could still, you know, somehow place you in that school by his miracle. All right, y'all, so here, is the craziest serendipity that the Holy Spirit has led me to. 
Um, so I'm going to share this clip with you guys. And uh, yeah, this is crazy. What he speaks about in the video, that's not what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about uh, the clip. What I'm going to share with you all here. When I play it, you guys will know what I'm talking about. Oh, well, really, actually, it's about uh, puzzle pieces, right? New insights, new revelations, moments of clarity, experiencing the light bulb moment. This is what I mean by puzzle pieces, uh, by catching puzzle pieces, right? That's why I named my channel. I changed it to catching puzzle pieces. Which, but what I mean by that is gaining new insights, gaining new understanding. Yes, but this serendipity, this is the craziest one yet. It blew my mind. It's crazy. Because uh, Father God basically, he, he gave someone else, another uh, brother in Christ, right? somewhere on planet earth he gave him the same he spoke to him he gave him the same revelation the same you know, understanding about insights and like i told you all before for me i had to figure out a way or father god had to give me a way to communicate the message right to you all and so that's why i call it catching puzzle pieces and that's why i give the glory to father god uh yeah but check out the serendipity uh and i'll play the video master and welcome i'm kenneth andre tenjutsu master and mystic messenger everything that i share and say and do is for a reason if this sounds like a contradiction there isn't investigate further now i am going to be really pushing the boundaries now in fact we're going over the boundaries no more milk it's going to be meat and it's going to be very challenging i urge you to be open-minded about the things that you're about to hear in this video the world is not what it seems okay the things we've been observing through our senses is not true as i've mentioned and i've given milk these little jigsaw puzzle pieces of gold hints throughout these videos, okay, of the nature of this world and our journey, etc. in it. And I'm all about the Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son being formed in us, that we would reflect the Father, our source, the conceived conception, the invisible light, spirit, and love, all right? With the living Holy Spirit, the Trinity, which is one, and it's in the temple of God. Okay, I just want to stress that first. And my purpose is to bring us closer to the truth, in balance, in harmony with the Creator, with the Holy Bee's name, wholeness, seeing God in full, seeing the face of God, and being in praise and appreciation. However, the things that Father has shown me, it's it's not for everyone, and that's why. Everything is in parables. Even, did you know the book of Enoch is actually referred to as the book of parables? Okay. However, spirit is pushing me to share what it is that I've received. What it is that I know. And not to hold back. And hence, I'm going deeper in this video. And I'm going to be saying some things that many would struggle with maybe think I was crazy and go off and carry a, carry on with their life. And that's fine. Okay. I wish you all the best. I really do. But nonetheless, I've got to share what it is that I've learned over the years, studying day and night and spirit actually was quite abrupt in showing me the falsity of this reality that I would be able to distinguish between that which is false and that which is true. And I know that where I am is completely fake. It's not the real reality. I've seen the visions. I know where I come from. A place I call home, which is our reality. This world is a shadow century copy, as told us in the Bible. 
okay god in his word gives us the keys to pass through the gate of rulership because this is a season of ruling and reigning and the father told me i'm going to give you keys in this season for 5784 for the door that we are going through it's not just for me i can't keep it to myself i have to share with my brothers and sisters and the other chosen ones because when we prophesy we only prophesy in part right and i have a piece of the puzzle that will help the next man or woman of god right so i have to do my due diligence by sharing what the lord gives. how you want to go and how you want to get there you got to control it. If not, it's over. A good human being, a fulfilled human being, doesn't need to break anyone down. All they do is want to build you up. So anybody you meet that calls you out of your name, that bullies you, that messes you up, that, that makes you feel not lifted, they are dealing with something deep-rooted. When you quit, your mind says, we're done. The mentality that you must have in life is that regardless of what's in front of you, you still must grind. I'll never be in the Olympics, I'll never be a professional athlete, but still I grind. I fail at most things I do, but still I grind. I don't wanna do half the shit I do, but still I grind. And that one day, you see me down a dark alley, running at one o'clock in the morning, no one thing. I was grinding. Stay hard. Being accepted is one thing that killed me. And you have to learn what do you want in your life?